Hey everyone, welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. I'm Marianne Mitchell. And today we're going to continue with uh, talking about the four phases of making abstract art. The last video I was focusing on the first phase, which is reckless abandon. And I'm demonstrating how you do that with my oil pastel technique. So what we're going to do now is move into the second phase, which is critical analysis. And we'll be looking at the same oil pastel and I'll be talking you through how I look at a piece at this stage and figure out where to go next. So this is the piece that um, I started with Reckless Abandon in the last video. And so now I came to a certain point and I was ready to take a look at what I have. And at this point, I'm going to ask myself a few questions um, in a critically analyzing way as opposed to a judgmentally criticizing way. So a critically analyzing way of going forward is, okay, what do I have here? What do I like? Is there anything that I like? What do I dislike? Um, is there something that's catching my attention? Is there something that's inviting me to build a story here, a visual story? And that could be anything from, I want the whole piece to be gray, or because it's a gray day, or it can be, you know, I want this to have this juxtaposition of mist and darkness because that's what I'm feeling these days. I think the whole world is sort of in this misty, dark place. And, you know, in other words, it can be very deep or it can be very much just about a color. So, that's in contrast to what I call judgmental criticism. So judgmental criticism is, oh, this really sucks. This turned out really badly. I paint the colors and um, I don't know what to do with it. It's, it's too much like a landscape and I wish it wasn't. And, you know, at this point I've talked myself out of wanting to do anything with this piece except throwing it in the trash can which I don't allow myself to do. Because you can always figure out a way forward. So that's what I'm going to do. And as I look at this piece, I am thinking, well, it is a gray day. <laughs> and that may be, although if you watched the last video, you could see that I was truly randomly picking colors. Uh, so there's a certain magic happening here that even though I was truly randomly picking colors, it ended up being a piece that kind of personifies the day and I guess a little bit my mood. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, well, what do I want to do with this? Do I want to keep the separation between dark and light? Um, that is a theme in my work of late and it is a theme that I'm captivated by. So, as you hear me thinking through this, you can tell that something that's interesting to me, separately from this piece, may be the invitation I need to go forward. In other words, maybe I want to push the dark and light in it, because that's something that's really intriguing to me these days. So. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push the dark and light. So you'll see how I do that. So what does that mean in terms of compositional language? Um, our visual language consists of line, color, shape, value, and texture. So the thing that's capturing me right now is the high contrast in value, or I want to push the value contrast so that there is a higher contrast between dark and light. That's different than wanting to come in and draw a whole bunch of lines or wanting to come in and bring bright colors in or wanting to come in and make, make more texture um, or to create shape from what's already there. I may end up 
and most likely will end up employing the other elements of visual language. But the thing that I'm most interested in going forward with is value contrast. I'm making that quite clear because I really want to drive home the relationship between what I feel in terms of being connected to this piece and how that determines what I'm going to do with visual language. So the next phase as I move forward with understanding, okay, I'm going to, to go forward rooted in my current, um, I guess you might say obsession with dark and light, the, the yin and yang of, of life and of the universe, and, um, and have that determine how I compose. And so where I am at this point is really coming to the end of phase two, which is critically analyzing what I want to do with the piece before I go back into it. So we will go together from here. So that concludes phase two, which is critical analysis. I hope that you got something from this video, and if so, I'd so appreciate you liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And then I invite you to go to wholeartistmastery.com, and there you will find a free booklet that talks about a lot of the things that I'm sharing with you in, in my videos and um, join the whole artist mastery community so thanks very much stay tuned for phase three which is integration i'll see you soon